Hello everybody and welcome back to the Veil of Crows. Uh, I've messed around with this a little bit since I did the tutorial video, tried to figure a few things out, how everything worked and get, you know, get a little more familiar with the game. So uh, now I've gone back and reset the game because this game actually continues uh, even when you create a new character. Uh, like say for instance you get tired of messing with your old one and you decide to start a new game when you start a new campaign your old character is still on the map uh, and the computer takes over uh, so I went through and, uh, and reset it that way uh, I'm starting out with a fresh game so we're gonna get started All right, we're going to start Vale of Crows. And of course, we're going to name our guy Gray Ghost Zorro. And yeah, let's give him some braided hair and uh, yeah, maybe a beard. Not a whole lot on the character selection. You can pick a couple of hair colors and stuff. But once again, this is early access. So uh, that may change a little bit, which you, you know, don't really see your character that much. So. Uh, we're going to accept, and this is going to be our right-hand man, or we should say men, uh, and women. So, right-hand men, uh, we're going to start the Great Plains. Uh, let's see, a few peasants, uh, experienced soldiers. Horse and some gold, small band of fighters. Uh, <laughs> you're poor, but at least you could afford the sword. Yeah, that didn't sound too easy to start with. Uh, small amount of gold, small band of light warriors, some resources. Uh, start with a town. Okay, yeah, let's go with that. Start with a town. That might get us into the game a little quicker. Uh, I tried a, uh, I can't remember what it was the first time, but. Uh, I didn't start with a town. I started with a mine, and it seemed like I, it took forever to get anywhere. So uh, it's like everybody else was kind of, you know, building up. All the other uh, computer players were building up much faster than I was. So uh, I'm going to start with this guy, and we'll see what happens. Want to rule a kingdom, you must first find a way to survive. The world will begin undeveloped, but towns will advance over time, unlocking new interactions. Game over will occur if your hero dies. The world will continue how you left it uh, as you start over. So everybody else will be where they're at, and you're starting over fresh. So, uh, so yeah, I, I wouldn't die. But fortunately, there is a reset button. Uh, we're going to begin. Your journey to this point has not been easy. Uh, many new challenges lay ahead. Something tells you your next few choices will be the difference between survival and death. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, upgrade your town and initiate trade with other factions. You'll need a supply of steel and leather if you wish to conquer the world. So we're going to begin our journey. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, we have a quarry. A lumber yard and a farm. So when we select our town, we see here our happiness. They're content right now. The population's kind of stagnant. Uh, that's town information. Your resources. This shows you uh, your maximum amount of resources and the amount you have on hand. Uh, somehow you start out with more than you're actually your maximum amount on most things and this tells you how much you're producing daily so right now i'm not producing any iron any leather or any gold so one of my first targets needs to be this gold mine up here maybe a farm i mean a uh, a ranch uh the ranch is where you get the leather from of course 
you know, the quarry, you get stone, lumber yard, lumber, gold mine, gold. It's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, let's see. That's another little town there. We have another quarry over here, another mine over here, another quarry over here, another mine, another lumber yard. So for now, I want to go ahead and this is my gold up here. Right now, I'm making 32 gold. That's depicted by the green arrow pointing up. It would be red pointing down if uh, if it were if I were going in the hole. You have to be real careful with your population, uh, or else you can easily start spending more each turn than uh, or each day than what you're actually making. Um, you make your, uh, your gold off of, of course, your tax income, uh, things of that nature. Uh, of course, you can sell a few things or set up trade with towns. Uh, I didn't really mess with that a whole lot. Uh, I mainly wanted to beat them up and take their stuff. So, <laughs> uh, so for now, what we're going to do is going into create army we have 15 peasants and 15 militia so we don't have a whole lot to deal with right now or a whole lot to uh to do anything with i should say so with that said the one of the first things i want to try to do is now everybody's unhappy and population is in the red so i want to boost this up to well fed which should help make everybody happy. And meanwhile, we're going to go to our farm and upgrade our cart capacity and cart speed. And then we really don't have a whole lot more we can do from there because we've spent most of our gold. So we're going to speed time up some here. And yeah, we made a little gold. Let's see what our town's looking like now. Okay, our population is starting to creep back up. Everybody's content. We got a green, so we're good. Notice our food is slowly going up. That's because our farm is sending us food. I apologize. I do have auto save on because uh, I have a bad habit of forgetting to save. <clears throat> so our food's going up pretty slow. So it's looking like we're going to be consuming more than we're than we're going to be able to get back and forth. So, we've got a little more gold. We're going to go to storage and upgrade. That way, if they do get caught up, it can build up a little better supply. All right, we got paid again. So, we're going to boost production some. You just select by clicking on each one and of course it shows you here what the requirements are for it 50 gold for cart speed 120 for cart capacity uh, there is a limit as to how far you can go like 100 storage I think and uh, I'm not sure if that goes up as you upgrade your town or not because uh, you can actually upgrade your town buildings Upgrade your granary, warehouse, stonemason, training grounds, etc. Uh, once you step up your keep, like to keep and build up higher and higher, you get more options available uh, to be able to, to build, uh, which gives you better units that you can train and things of that nature. Pardon me just a minute. We're going to uh, 
Let's see. Ah, it doesn't look like we can uh, turn off the auto save without exiting the game, so we're going to leave the auto save on. That way I don't forget to save, because I will forget to save. All right, we're at showing 12, 20 of 50, 28 of 50, 36 of 50, 44 of 50. Okay, so it's keeping up with our, uh, the amount of food we're using each day. Of course, you use food based on you know, how many people you've got. So, we want to create some army. I like hatchet men, so I always try to train a few of those as soon as we get done auto-saving. Okay, now we're back. Uh, hopefully that'll make things a little better. I know the autosave thing is going to get on your nerves uh, because there's a whole lot of it. It saves very uh, frequent. So you notice now our population is up to 62, so we should have a lot of peasants to be able to train. Of course, the better fed they are, the happier they are, the more people come to your, your town. So we're going to start training a pretty good little army of these guys. And we need some range units. That's pretty much uh, pretty much the best you've got for starting. Okay, so we've used up all of our guys. We're going to speed our time back up. And let's check to see how many enemies we have right now. <clears throat> Bandits and deserters, of course. This one's negative 10, this one's negative 5. Negative 6 and negative 2. Alright. Hofsvagar, I guess is how you pronounce that. Let's see where they're at on the list. Okay, that's right. Rugen is the faction, so the faction is what I'm looking for. All right, right now they're neutral. They have two villages and two heroes. Uh, when you click on that, it tells you, of course, what they've got. They've got a gold mine and a steel mine, uh, both of which I need, so I might be making enemies with these guys real quick. Uh, Population 33, that just tells you how many people, are, of course, are, are there. Uh, I don't think they're all uh, soldiers. I think they count the peasants or the workers as well. So, Hugen's got a gold mine here. Let's see if we can find that. Uh, let's see what else they've got. Okay, there's their mine, so we need that one and that one. That'll pretty much wipe them out. Hopefully we won't make too many enemies in the process. So we're going to speed up a little bit so we can get our training out of the way here. Ah, it looked like bandits came and they took them out, so that's good. Less for me to have to do.
Okay, let's see where we're at now. 15 hatchet men and 15 fowlers. All right, we're going to let them. Let them build up a little bit more. I maybe add a few more of these guys. I'll say once again, we don't want to go too crazy or we'll start exceeding our uh, our resources. So we're going to speed back up here. And now we're keeping up with our food, so that's good. Our stone and our lumber is kind of a low number produced daily, so we'll work on that also. Go to our lumber yard, maybe boost our storage a little bit. Upgrade our output. Greater production. I'll wait till we get a little more cash. You can actually set, you know, when when it triggers uh, for your lumber yards and things of that nature to start sending you resources. I bump that up a little bit and bump that up a little bit. And we're going to stop there for that. Go to the quarry. And we got to wait till we get paid again. And while we're waiting on that, we'll go ahead and see who else we can train. Maybe train a few of these guys. Ah, we've got to have wood, stone, and some gold. Okay, it won't let us train anymore, so we must be at our population limit, which I'm not really certain uh, how to tell what that limit is at this point. So, oh, I don't know, maybe there's, maybe there's some other reason, let's see. Ah, right, because it'll let us train, train these guys, and these guys. For some reason it won't let us train militia, or woodsman. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be that way or if it's something I'm missing. Because uh, it doesn't show anything really in the requirements that I don't have. So. Okay, so we're going to bump our speed up a little bit here again. Let's go up here and check. Okay, they're still at 33 population. So, I'm going to let a few more of those surf train, and then we are going to invade. So far, the what I've been using, which works, it's 
very simple tactic. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure I'm losing a lot more people than if I would specify uh, which units attack which units. I pretty much just try to find a high spot on the terrain when I go into the battle and just pretty much hold everybody back, set them on aggressive, and let the archers do their damage as the enemy's incoming. And then I will switch the archers over to melee and let them finish off because you can uh, uh, friendly fire is a real thing in this game so uh, you'll start taking out your own people if they're still firing arrows when the enemy's right on top of you so you have to switch that on and off change them from uh, range to melee melee to ranged uh, etc so now we're going to go to create army I'm going to take my guy, and let's say about three quarters of my hatchet men, fowlers, and serfs, and create army. So now we've got our army here. We're going to go up here, right click, and run over to it. The bar at the top shows me that we're overpowering them. We've got several options. Uh, you can offer to uh, spare the lives of the military units if you uh, tell them to leave immediately, which will hurt your standing with them, uh, but you know may not put you at war. Uh, I hadn't tried taking everything that's not nailed down. Uh, usually the one I use is go ahead and just kill everybody and take it for ourselves so that's what we're going to do this time attack All right, we want to take everybody we've got with us and accept. So here we are. Got a pretty good little group of guys here. And this is where we're headed. So we're going to go ahead and right click and drag and get these guys up here. This ought to be a pretty simple, uh, if you notice, I'm the pink, they're the blue, or purple, or whatever color you want to call that. So, we have a distinct advantage over them. The zoom is a little bit tricky on this, so uh, you have to bear with me. It's like once it gets close, it just zooms all the way. Uh, okay, it looks like they're going to make us come to them. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start out over here. And put our guys there. Try to move in within distance of the ranged units. And have them start doing their thing. Set them to aggressive stance. Just select our archers. And move them in a little closer. Spread them out some. I always like to keep everybody selected for the, uh, for the main battle. Eh, still doesn't look like we're in range. So... We're going to get a little bit closer. Go ahead and bring everybody else up some too.
Yeah, I forgot these guys have got a pretty short range on them, so we're going to go ahead and rush on in. And now that everybody's in, we're going to change our archers over to Malay because I do not want them killing my own people. Of course, the graphics on the, the battle aren't really all that great, uh, the animations and things. But once again, this is early access, so... We we'll just have to wait and see where they go from here with it. I usually just kind of stay zoomed out so I can see, you know, what's going on. Who might need some help? Cowards fled the field. Pursue them. Kill every one of them. I increased my, increased my skills in battle, which means I leveled up. That's a good thing. So we're going to chase them out of town. Change my archers back over to ranged. Ah, killed by a friendly arrow. That's chance you take. Just trying to get as many of these guys as I can as they escape. And looks like most of them made it out, so. Change back over to Malay so I don't kill any more of my own guys. Try to take out a few of these stragglers as they come through. Alright, that seems to be everybody. So this shows us that we made 32 gold. We took four prisoners. Alright, so we're going to exit. Whenever you take over a place, your army automatically uh, automatically occupies that area. So there's the rest of the guys. So, what I usually like to do is go ahead and upgrade this guy. Uh, leadership seems to be a good one because that affects your whole army's uh, damage. So... I'm going to select this, create army. I'm going to take my hatchet men, and my fowlers, and my serfs. Uh, I'll leave my serfs. I need a few workers and leave a couple of the fowlers. Create army, and then we're going to go back after this guy and finish him off. Because if you see, it shows we're already at war, so I'm not going to do any more damage. And... This little button here will speed you up and uses stamina so you can catch up with your enemies as long as they don't do the same thing. Another useful thing, request an audience with the leader. Offer them a tribute to join your force. If you notice, we've got them severely outnumbered, so it shows your percentage. We've got enough gold to have a 45% chance, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and take them out. Because I did notice in my other game... Uh, that I was kind of learning the ropes on. Uh, a lot of times if you let these guys go, they're going to turn around and attack one of your other places. Uh, so 
I like to take them out before they have a chance to do that. So, here we go. Let's see if these guys are going to come to us or if we got to go to them. Okay, it looks like they're moving towards us. Yep, there they are. So, we're going to take a look at where we're at. We're on top of a hill, so we're going to move a little closer to the edge. Spread out pretty good. Put our guys on aggressive stance. And they should do their thing as the enemies get close. See, I'm coming across the water now. Unfortunately, our range units do not have much of a much of a range for range units. Oh, it looks like they're firing on us, actually. They are. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to send our bows to attack. Let's send our other forces to attack these guys. And follow up by changing over to Malay and attack from the flank. Ah, our archers are taking a lot of damage, so let's get up there and help them. That's just clearing the way for better units. Unfortunately, I made a mistake on this one. I'm coming up a hill towards them, so I lost momentum for my attack. It does make a difference. That one guy's being pretty tough to take down, it looks like. Alright, so let's charge this guy. And that did it. I always click pursue even if there's nobody left just in case I miss somebody. It looks like we gained six gold. And we're going to exit. One thing I did forget to do, let me go back to my mine. When I left my mine earlier, I forgot to take... Ah, I leveled up again. So let me go ahead and assign those. Uh, let's see. Authority, better income tax in town. That pays off, so we'll go ahead and get that. But I forgot to take my prisoners with me when I left. So I'm going to take them. Uh, and just hatchet men. I'll leave these other guys. Somebody's got to do the work. Create army, and then we're going to go back to our base, and we have gained ourselves a gold mine. So now, so we're at 100% workforce, or better than 100%. Uh, let me go ahead and upgrade a few things on it, since we've got some gold while we've been fighting. We've gained a little bit. Go ahead and upgrade our lumber yard some more. Our 
farm's doing pretty good, so we'll hold off on that one. And upgrade our quarry a little bit. And we've spent most of our gold, so I'm going to hold off there. And now look at upgrading our buildings a little bit. <clears throat> Training grounds, guard, uh, guard house is used to train spearmen. All right, we can upgrade to a keep, which will give us more things, but I always like to upgrade the smaller things first. So we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the granary, upgrade the warehouse. Upgrade the training grounds. And as you see, we're short on wood and stone now, so we'll give our lumber yard and our quarry a little time to catch up. Okay, we're good on wood. I keep clicking on it because it doesn't refresh automatically. You have to actually click on it, refresh it. And we're good on that, so we'll go ahead and build that. You notice walls require you to upgrade to a small keep before you can build those so this is what we need next we're upgrading our town hall to a keep so it's going to take us a little while to come up with that uh, it won't take us too long but we'll give everybody a chance to catch up we need some hide though uh, and we're not producing that so let me create an army Let's take a few guys. Since we have made some enemies, we don't want to go out alone. And we'll go over here to the ranch and purchase some hides. Oh, don't have enough food. Okay. And the marketplace purchase resources. All right. We will trade. And now we will leave. So back to town we go. Let's see. Ooh. Okay, we're eating more than we're producing. So let's go upgrade our farm some more. Oh, we've got a lot of bandits floating around here. Alright, so we're going to slow it down a little bit. One thing I recommend doing is going ahead and creating some army to just a few few people here and there to go ahead and send to your farm and lumber mill and things of that nature so you've got some people uh, there to defend when things get hairy and they will get hairy so always train some militia and hatchet men or something like that you know to, to send to them to Kind of help until I can get there. All right, so let's create an army. We've got 22 militia, so we'll split that in half and send part of them to our farm. If you know, 
guys. Those guys are going to truck their way on over there. Create another army. The rest of our militia. Send them to our lumber yard. Create another army. I will send 10 hatchet men. Maybe a couple of peasants. To our quarry. And let's, a couple of peasants. And we'll send some woodsmen. To our gold mine. That way everybody will have a little bit of backup. Okay. Now, let's train some units. Now we can train militia and woodsmen. Maybe, I don't know, maybe we needed the uh, some of the upgrades we did before we could do those. Not sure. So, I'm going to train a few of these guys. And a few more of these guys. Train a few of these guys. And a few of these guys. I always like having a pretty good mix. Well, we keep running out of stone, so maybe upgrade our stone quarry a little bit. Take about 30 of our hatchet men. A fowler is a pretty good amount of these guys. And that should do it. Meanwhile, while we're at it, let's check and see what our resource level is. Okay, we've caught up on food. Stones, and eh, pushing it a little bit, but we're getting there. So, we have 81 people. Guess where we're going next? We need a mine. So, this is the last town these guys have got, or what's considered a town or a village, or what a village, I should say. I believe is what that's considered. Yes, a village. So, we're going to take that out. We're going to kill them and take for ourselves and keep in mind if they have any allies. That's going to hurt our reputation with them just like you would expect. Uh, so hopefully we're not making too many enemies right off the bat. But uh, I like to be set up where you know I've got access to all resources early. Makes upgrading and building a, a better army a lot easier. So, here we go. Let's we'll see if they're going to come to us or if we got to go to them. Actually, I think we're going to probably go ahead and go to them. So, let's do that here. Charge! Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks like they're going to make us come to them again, so. Just going to let everybody get in place. Select our bowmen. Put them out here. Put our spears out in front of them. Hatchet man coming in a close second. And then I'm going to stand over here to the side. change everybody to Malay because these guys are ranged also. I like to kind of run off with my character and then charge him with our hero character. get back on my horse because I can't catch him on foot. And he's going to get away. That's okay. We'll catch him. Next time. It's kind of hard to spot the enemy. Uh, that's the reason I zoom way out and control and drag. That way uh, I can select them even though I can't see them. All right, two more prisoners, 32 gold. So we're going to exit. And now we have our people fleeing, so I want to create an army. Go ahead and take my prisoners with me, why not? And just take a couple of, I uh, say the majority of my hatchet men and all that good stuff with me and catch up with this guy. Notice it says population 10, I have 35, so it's ought to be a pretty easy fight. Let's see if we can offer a tribute to them. Ah, we don't have enough gold. So we're going to leave, attack again. Our forces attack. 
I don't use the auto resolve. I haven't even tried it yet. I'm not sure what the percentage of uh, how much better it is if you let it just fight its own battle, but uh, the battles are what's fun for me, so. We're going to take everybody with us. And since we don't have any ranged people this time, we're just going to charge in. It looks like they're going to stand still and wait on us. There they are. Uh, they have some ranged units, it looks like. So. Oh, so they're going to attack me right off the bat. So let's go ahead and try to take this guy out. And we'll bring our axes in, too. Ah, oh, you didn't see that coming, did you? Alright, I increased my skills in battle again, so... That's good. Get circled around and charge into this group again. And we'll charge this guy again. Oh, he's not going down easy. Ah, he was a general. All right. Pursue. Of course, everybody's dead. So we're going to exit. So, there you have it. We, uh... Managed to get us a mine. We're going to go ahead and upgrade everything on it, or upgrade what we can, I should say. And we're going to take our guy back to our town. And let's check our uh, relations with everybody. Yeah. Hey, you notice they don't have any towns, heroes, or villages, so they're pretty much gone. Uh, let's see who else we hurt faction with. Oh, actually, we gained faction because we were doing a little worse than this, so. Uh, hmm, did pretty good on some of these. So we actually come out to the better by killing those guys. They must have had a lot of enemies. Uh, there is actually a way, I mean, you can actually check that, so. Uh, so if you click on, yeah, let me see if I can remember how this works. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> if you click on one of the factions and click on relations, it'll show you who they're at war with, who they're neutral with. Oh, these guys have got a lot of enemies too. You know, they're at war with everybody but two of them, so. One of them being me. So uh, there's only one other, one other faction that they're not at war with. So they may be our next target. But we're gonna get our guy back to a. Uh, notice our authority has increased uh, taxation by 20 gold. So we got 20 bonus gold from tax because of my character skills. Uh, we've upgraded some of the stuff at our mine. 
So we're going to head and see if there's anything else. Yeah, cart speed. We'll upgrade that. We just got paid again. So we'll bump up our cart capacity. Need to, since that's so far away, we really need the cart uh, upgrades first. But I just go through and upgrade anything I can. Uh, we gained another level, so two more points available to spend. I'm going to bump up the agility a little bit because we want to be able to move fast. Is there a hero at King? Must be a minimum level 15. I hadn't... Uh, I hadn't got that far yet. Even on the uh, the other one that I tried, I didn't make it that far. Uh, so, let's see where we're at. Uh, we need a bunch more gold, so we're going to just kind of kick back for right now and let everything settle out. I think we've made enough enemies for right now. Uh, Let's kind of let that go right there and see where it goes. Actually, we really need that ranch, so let's see. We're neutral with them right now. They have two towns and nine villages. Ooh, so they're they're pretty stout. Um, so let's see here. Militia, we have six. Let's go ahead and create that army. And send them to our mine. And I guess I have a death wish because I'm going to go ahead and create another army. Hmm. I don't have a whole lot of people there. 54, let's see. Oh, they don't have but four people, so. We're going to go make some more enemies. This time we're going to try it a little bit different. We're going to seek an audience and offer a tribute. They'll join for 204 gold coins, no less. So we're going to make that offer. And if you notice, even doing it that way, still lose some relation with them but you can always do you know jobs for for that you know faction or whatever and increase that back and never have to fight notice they're leaving they're going on their way uh, and we now have a ranch that has nobody so we're gonna go and get yeah, maybe, you know, 14, 15 peasants. Create an army of peasants <clears throat> and send them to our ranch. I'm going to bring this guy back. Ooh, we're negative 20 gold. That's not good. Okay, there we go. We just got paid. Ooh, that was good because if you stay to the negative, your people actually start deserting. Your, uh, and we re really can't afford to have anybody deserting right now because we've kind of stretched ourselves thin here, especially with the enemies we've made. And we probably need to look at... Let's see, scalding, I guess is how you pronounce that. Ooh, that's the ones that we made enemies with, so probably wouldn't do much good to try to work out a trade agreement with them right now. So we're going to leave that one alone. Uh, that's pretty much all we're surrounded by, so we, we made a lot of enemies real close, but... Uh, Yeah, 
Yeah, pretty much everybody else is on our island, but you know, there is the mainland. Uh, it's a pretty vast area. And then you've got this little area up here. It has a, you know, a mine and a, another stronghold and a gold mine. A couple little islands here and there. Uh, travel across water, just in case you're wondering. You notice you see the little boats. All you have to do is just uh, right click on where you want to go. And when you get to the water, you automatically turn into a boat. So, I guess these guys keep a boat in their back pockets. But, anyway, uh, we've gone a little over what I expected this video to, but we've uh, gained pretty much all the, the basics that we need. Uh, if you notice, we're producing not a whole lot of hide at the time, but we're producing everything we need to start building up good. Um... Uh, we only made one enemy, we got rid of him. And all of our other factions are halfway decent, except for the one we're surrounded by, which I'll do a couple of jobs for them and try to make that better. But uh, hopefully this will give you some insight into the game. And if you decide to play, you know, maybe it'll <clears throat> keep you from doing like I did. And uh, at, at, you know, first out doing a lot of head scratching and a lot of starting over and, uh, Sitting there going, you know, oh man, how in the heck am I supposed to do this, you know, because, uh, like I said, it's much easier if you start uh, with a town, uh, as you can imagine, because with just a, uh, like a mine or a farm or uh, something of that nature, or if you start as one of the characters, I, I hadn't even tried starting as one of the characters that does not have anything except for... You know, that may be a band of warriors or, you know, some workers or something like that. I hadn't tried that. I'm, I'm not even sure where to start on something like that because uh, everybody else is, is building up much faster than you. So I'm sure it would be real easy to get behind. Um, with that said, hopefully, you know, it'll give you some insight into the game if it's something you're interested in. Um, you know, it's... It's still in early access. Uh, they're doing a lot of updates. So hopefully, you know, they're just going to improve on it. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm not sure about the... Uh, uh, I'm not familiar with the game, but I have heard comparisons to Mountain Blade. Uh, I'm not real familiar with that game. Uh, I have looked into it a little bit, and I do see a lot of similarities. Um, but... Hopefully this will give you a little bit of a head start if you decide to get into it or if you're debating on whether to get it or not. Uh, you know, I guess a good time sink, uh, as all games are. But anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Uh, you guys are the ones that make it happen, and I really appreciate every like, every subscription. Uh, I hadn't been going long at this, so uh, every single one counts, and I really appreciate it. So, this is Grego Zorro signing out.